In our last episode, we fully explored Vault 15 and finally, at long last, discovered the real location of Vault 13. After solving all problems between the NCR and the squatters of Vault 15, we can head slightly west of NCR to find the cave entrance to Vault 13. Along the way, Hakunin reaches out to us. Chosen, the village weakens. It is harder to touch your dreams. You must hurry, or we will all... Oh no, time is running short, but we're on our way to Vault 13. We're almost there. Let's see if we can find this Gek. The cave itself does not have much, and when we find the vault door, we see that it's closed. Has Vault 13 been sealed ever since our ancestor, the Vault Dweller, left all those years ago? To find out, we've got to open the door. <laughs> Heading inside, we arrive on the first level of Vault 13. There's a locker in the wall here at the entrance, but it's empty. And as soon as we open the door towards the elevator, <laughs> we find Death Claws. But, uh, but these death claws don't attack. What? Stepping forward. Do not fear me, human. I do not intend to harm you. I am Grusar, leader of this death claw pack. Why have you come here? We can be absolute idiots and say, I came here to kick your ass. Or we can value our own skin and engage in conversation. How is it possible that a Deathclaw can talk? And so well, the Chosen One can ask. Forgive me, I do not mean to be rude, but I do not see that this is relevant to our conversation. I can speak your tongue, I can read your written word, what more needs be said? I don't mean to pry, says the Chosen One, but surely you can understand my interest in this matter. Yes, I certainly can. Very well. If we part as friends, human, you should speak with Goris. He has more understanding in this matter than I. He can usually be found in the vault library. Thank you, we can say. I look forward to meeting Goris. But now I'd like to know what happened to the people who once lived here. They are gone, human. We did not kill them and take their home. It is not our way to kill. I understand that you may not believe me, but I hope that you will judge me by my actions towards you, and not out of fear or prejudice. You seem to be an honorable being, Gruthar, says the Chosen One. Well, I'm looking for something called a Gek. I was told I could find one here. A Gek? Is that not a small lizard? No, wait, that is a Gecko. I am sorry, but I do not know what a Gek is, nor where it can be found. To be honest with you, we can say, I'm not exactly sure what it is myself. Would it be all right with you if I looked for it? I am sorry, but I do not allow just anyone to wander these halls. I am responsible for the safety of all who live here, and I must exercise caution. However, I will look for this Gek, and if I find it, I will let you know. I can understand your concern, the Chosen One can say. You don't know me well enough to trust me. What if I could help you out somehow, and in return, you allow me to look around? And Gruthar stares at us intently for a moment. You would be interested in helping us? Yes, I sense little evil in you. Very well, I shall place my trust in you. There are machines here, machines built by humans. Death claw hands cannot use these machines. However, there is one machine that understands questions. I ask it to run the other machines and it obeys. This machine no longer listens. It will no longer run the other machines. We are running out of food and water. I have ordered raids on the human land so that we may survive. I am not proud of this and I would put an end to it. If you repair this machine, I will be able to feed my people once again, and I will gladly stop the raids. Will you agree to this? We recall that Weston had lost a lot of Brahmin due to Deathclaw raids. It must have been Gruthar's Deathclaw, whom we saw at Weston's grazing grounds back in NCR. 
Hmm, says the Chosen One. Sounds like the voice recognition module has gone bad on you. Let's go take a look. Thank you. The machine is in the vault control center on the third level. If you can repair it, please do so. I am placing my trust in you. Please do not betray it. You are welcome here. I won't let you down, Gruthar. You have my word on that, says the Chosen One. And with that, we have free reign of Vault 13, and we can talk with all of these Deathclaw. But first, we can go back to our highwayman at the entrance to Vault 13, because we already have a Vault Tech computer voice module. Remember, we found one while exploring the second floor of Vault 8. It was in a footlocker on the ground by a bathroom. And we could have bought one for 3,000 bucks from Eldritch of New Reno Arms in New Reno. So snagging our voice module, we can head back to Vault 13. Opening the door to the right, we see a number of computers against the wall, but we can't interact with any of them. Then opening the door to the clinic, we can talk with the doctor here. Hello, I'm Joseph the Herbalist. What can I help you with? Are you a prisoner here, we can ask? No, I'm not a prisoner. I stay because I'm needed here. I've learned to accept the fact that some of my patients are death claws. That's very commendable of you, we can say. Can you leave here if you want? Yes, he says I can, and often do. I have to collect my herbs from time to time, and I've never been stopped. I used to wonder if the death claws were secretly following me, and whether or not they would stop me if I tried to leave. So one day, I put the theory to the test. I traveled to another town and stayed there a week or so before returning. When I got back, I was warmly welcomed. Gruthar, the pack leader, came to me privately and personally thanked me for coming back. No, I am definitely here because I want to be. What can you tell me about the death claws, we can ask? Well, let's see, he says. Death claws appear to be mutated Jackson's chameleons, the horned variety. There are a lot of similarities still present, but an even greater number of differences. The mutation factor is quite high. This species is highly intelligent, about the equivalent of an eight-year-old, with some individuals reaching human normal levels. Their learning capacity is very high, and they are capable of abstract thought and reasoning. Although they do not have vocal cords, the death claws seem to mimic human speech much the same way as a parrot does. I have yet to discover the exact mechanism behind this, so I'm unable to say more at this time. Socially, they are pack animals, with a very rigid code of ethics. They are led by an alpha male who rules with mutual consent of the pack. They appear to be extremely loyal to the pack as a whole, treating it as a family unit rather than having individual families as humans do. Their sense of right and wrong is very well defined. They do follow a code of ethics that is enforced by the pack as a whole. Violence is never used as a solution to a problem among the pack as far as I can see. There have been no capital crimes committed here, so I can't say how those are handled. Hmm, that's about all I can think of for now. I hope that helps you. How did you come to be here in the first place, we can ask? While I was gathering herbs one night when a voice called to me out of the darkness. I have been watching you, it said, and I know that you are a healer. Are you dedicated to your art enough to heal someone foreign to you? Someone whom many would consider an enemy? I answered that I respected all life and would do my best to heal the injured, regardless of who or what they were. I thought it was some thief or raider who had gotten himself hurt and needed a doctor. You can't begin to imagine my surprise when a couple of death claws stepped out of the night with an injured companion. Somebody had shot him up real good. I told them I couldn't work on him where we were, so they blindfolded me and brought me here. I've been here from that day forward. Well, thanks for the information. I'll be heading out, we can say. Moving out, we find a computer behind Gruthar, but we can't access it. So moving towards the elevator, we can talk to the death claws standing next to it. Forgive. I no speak well. I try talk you. Who are you, we can ask. I, Thirn. Who you? It's a pleasure to meet you, Thirn. I'm Oxhorn. You want what? What are you doing here, we can ask. I guard hall. Safety of pack goal. What are you guarding the hall against, we can ask. Intruder. Human. 
Deathclaw, whatever. Pack threatened, I attack. No offense, we can ask, but just how smart are you? How I judge, not know. Some things understand much, some things understand little. Lot things understand not. And the Chosen One can say, yeah, well, that describes me as well. When done talking to Thirn, we can access the elevator and take it to floor number two. We find a Deathclaw standing just outside the elevator door. Hello, human. Sorry to bother you, we can say, but who are you? I Dar, warrior. I'm Oxhorn Dar. What you want? What's your job at the vault, we can ask? Dar guard hall and keep peace. Nothing more. Please don't take offense, we can ask, but how educated are you? Not much, but I learn. Gruthar, he leader, tell us all learn. And we can say Gruthar is right. You should all try to educate yourselves. When done talking with Dar, we can explore the rooms, but these are all empty. We don't find any trace of the Vault 13 dwellers who once lived here. Could Gruthar be telling the truth? Is he and his Deathclaw pack really not responsible for the disappearance of these Vault residents? In the middle of this floor, we find a room all off on its own, and inside we find a hooded human. Welcome, Traveler. I'm called Gordon, and I'm the Shrine Keeper. What can I help you with? Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Gordon. I'm Oxhorn. Can I ask you some questions? Certainly you may, he says. Who is this shrine dedicated to, we can ask? This shrine is dedicated to an unnamed hero known only as the Vault Dweller. He, or she, was the savior of all who lived here several decades ago. We do not know what became of our savior, but he, or she, lives on in our minds and hearts. Well, how long have you been here, we can ask? I have lived all my life here in this vault, he says. I have been a shrine keeper for most of those years. Then we can say you were here when the Death Claws took over? But he says, no, my friend, I was not. I left a few months ago to visit the statue of the Vault Dweller, erected in the central court of the NCR, the New California Republic, east of here. When I returned to the vault, I found the Death Claws were already here. Needless to say, I was in shock. However, I am convinced that they are not responsible for what happened to my fellow citizens. If by chance you want more information on this matter, you can seek out Goris in the library. Ha! Huh. So even one of the original Vault Dwellers of Vault 13 is convinced that the Death Claws did nothing to the original Dwellers. Well, we'll have to find this Goris. Well, what can you tell me about the Death Claws, we can ask? And he says, I have lived with the Death Claws for several months now. They seem to be honorable and forthright in their dealings with me and the other humans who live here. I trust them, and in time, I think you will as well. Well, why do you stay here, we can ask? And he says, my place is here at the shrine. I will not leave it willingly. All right, well, thanks, Gordon. Goodbye. Man, what a sad future for this guy. Guarding a shrine dedicated to a man that no one is left to admire. To the north, we find a number of rooms. In the first room, we find a tribal. Is there something I can help you with, stranger? He says. Who are you, we can ask. My name is Matt. Does it matter? Uh, are you a prisoner here, we can ask? Yes, as a matter of fact, I am, says Matt. I stumbled upon this place and got myself captured by the Death Claws. They gave me freedom of movement within the lower levels of the vault, but I can never go to level one where the exit is. Why is that, we can ask? Because, unlike the rest of the sheep who live here, I recognize them as a threat to humanity. They know that if I get out of here, I will see to it that they are wiped off the face of this earth. Look, they can think for themselves. They can learn. They can read and even write if they dip a claw in ink. They are fast, tough, perceptive, and deadly. If their numbers grow large enough, they will be the greatest threat that the human race could ever face. Think about it. They need to be eliminated. Here the Chosen One can make a choice. We can say, you do have a point. What should we do? Alone I don't stand a chance, says Matt. But together we can fight our way out of here. How about it? Yes, says the Chosen One. <laughs> and we 
appear on floor one. And of course, Matt dies instantly to Thirn, leaving us to fight both him and Gruthar alone. Probably not the best of ideas. So instead of saying that he has a point, we can say, I realize that they're a potential threat, but I trust them. Ard says Matt, you're a fool to trust them. If you change your mind, come back and get me. Bye, we can say. Well, I think we understand why they have Matt imprisoned here. Moving on to the next room, we find another guy. Oh, he says, I didn't see you standing there. Uh, that's okay, says the Chosen One. We all space out at times. Say, you look rather down. May I ask why? And he says, I was born two months premature. When I was one, I was dropped on the porch. When I was two, I had pneumonia. When I was three, I got the chicken pox. When I was four, I fell down the stairs and broke six ribs. When I was five, my uncle was decapitated by a watermelon. When I was six, my parents hit me in the head with a shovel. When I was seven, I lost my right index finger to my pet rat. When I was eight, my dog Spike got hit by a tractor. When I was nine, my mother lost her arm to a rabid Brahmin. When I was ten, my sister was torn to bits by a pack of dogs. When I was eleven, my grandfather killed himself because I was ugly. When I was twelve, my grandmother killed herself because I was ugly. When I was 13, my father poked out his eyes with a pitchfork in a drunken stupor. When I was 14, my brother lost his hand to a wallaby. When I was 15, my aunt choked to death on a chicken bone. When I was 16, I lost my cousin to a badger. When I was 17, I cut off my left big toe with a hoe. When I was 18, my father lost his right leg to that same tractor that killed my dog. When I was 19, I'm truly sorry that you've had so much pain in your life, interrupts the Chosen One. Hopefully things have gotten better. And he says, well, there I was, traveling through the desert, when suddenly my Brahmin falls over dead. About then I realized I was low on water and hadn't had a drink in quite a while. Later, my bones began to ache, my head started to hurt, my bowels became loose, and I got this rash that just wouldn't go away. It was time to sit down and die. Well, there I was, sitting in the desert, waiting for the world to swallow my miserable existence, when a pack of death claws shows up. Well, I'm thinking to myself, this is it. Now I can die. I can wind up as a pile of death claw crap in the middle of the desert. But no, fate had yet another cruel card to play against me. You see, the death claws didn't kill me. Instead, they gave me water, brought me here, gave me this room, gave me food, cleaned me up, and now they won't let me leave. I know they're fattening me up for some unknown horrible fate. I keep telling them that I would probably taste better if I was leaner, but it does no good. They just smile, if you can call it that, and pat me on the head and say, Don't worry, human. Things will get better. Ha! We both know what that means. Anyway, so to make matters worse, then they started giving me some sort of medication. It was making me gassy, so I stopped taking it. And it's a good thing that I did. I think it was some sort of mind control pill. Because I started to feel like things weren't actually as bad as I thought. Anyway, that's about it. I'm just waiting for the dinner bell to chime so that they can feast on my bloated body. And the Chosen One can say... Please tell me that you don't have any children. And he says, nope. When I turned 22, this strange fungus started to grow on my test. Stop! I don't want to know, says the Chosen One. Oh, wow. Well, that was a roller coaster. Well, let's leave him for now. The next two rooms are completely empty. So we can go back to the elevator and take it all the way down to floor three. Floor 3 of Vault 13 has a similar layout to Floor 3 of every vault we've explored in California. The rec room to the right is empty, so we can go down the hallway and turn west. Here we find a familiar face. Well, I'll be... How are you doing, Oxhorn? I hope everything worked out for you at the squat. Dahlia, says the Chosen One. Thanks to you, things worked out great. Remember, Dahlia was the one who was blocking our path to the shack where the raiders were keeping Chrissy. If we convinced her to walk away, she winds up here in Vault 13. 
Hey, she says, I'm glad to hear that. It was my pleasure to do what I could for you. So what can I help you with? Are you a prisoner here, we can ask? And she says, no, I'm not. I'm here of my own free will and I like it. I think this will be a safe place for me to stay for a while. Can you leave any time you want, we can ask? Yeah, she says, I've been told I'm free to go or stay. I'm staying for now. Well, what can you tell me about the death claws, we can say? I don't know any more about them than you do, I guess, she says. I'm still trying to get used to them talking to me instead of tearing my head off and using it as a golf ball. It's scary, you know? Well, how did you come to be here, we can ask. After I left the squat, she says, I didn't know what to do with myself. I figured I'd just drift into another town and another hired gun job, so I was wandering the desert trying to decide exactly where I should go. Well, one day I was looking for a good place to camp. It was getting late and I didn't want to be out in the open after dark. Off in the distance a ways, I thought I saw a campfire, so I decided to see who was there. So I sneak up on this campsite, and there are these two death claws sitting around the fire, just chatting away. Idiot that I am, I let out a little cry of surprise, jumped up and turned to run, right into the arms of another death claw standing right behind me. Anyway, to make a long story short, it took a while for me to realize I wasn't about to be put on a spit and barbecued. Instead, I was brought here and interviewed by Gruthar. Now I can live here if I want. Why are you so worried about needing a place of safety, we can ask. Well, when I let you buy me in the squat, I broke my contract with my employer. I was sure that I'd be hunted down and killed because of it. Seeing you here convinces me that I don't have to worry about that. I can only assume that my previous employer is no longer in any condition to be concerned with me or my whereabouts. And since we personally killed Darian, we can say you're safe now, Dahlia. You have no need to worry about any retribution. Thanks, Oxhorn, she says. That takes a load off my mind. Moving into the computer lab, we find a number of computers still working, but we can't access any of them. So, heading out and moving into the library, we see a robed figure. Hello, I'm Goris. I don't recognize you. Are you new here? Hi, we can say. I'm Oxhorn. Yes, I'm from outside the vault. It's a pleasure to meet you, Oxhorn. So you're an outsider. I've seen a few like you. Some are staying here in the vault, but you look different. You appear to be more seasoned, if you know what I mean. I'll bet you've been around a bit and accomplished things. Am I right? Yes, I've had some adventures, we can say. Say, if you wouldn't mind answering some questions for me, I could tell you some of my adventures in return. It's a deal. I would love to hear anything you can tell me. What would you like to know? Well, what are you doing here, we can ask? Oh, I'm a student of sorts. I'm trying to learn as much as I can about the world and the different cultures that I've developed. Right now, I'm studying the culture the Death Claws are forming and comparing it to human development along similar lines. I've acquired just about all the information I need here. It would help my research a great deal if I could do some traveling. However, I don't want to go it alone, if you know what I mean. Are you a prisoner here, we can ask? No, I can leave any time I like. I haven't done so because I don't want to travel alone. I'm pretty tough and can take care of myself, but I would still be one person alone in the desert if anything happened. How long have you been here, we can ask? Uh, a few months, actually. I came here from the coast a while back. Oh, so he's been here about as long as the Death Claws. Must have arrived shortly after they did. What can you tell me about the Death Claws here, we can ask? These aren't your average death claws, as I'm sure you've noticed. They've had their intelligence enhanced by some means not understood by them. It was done by a group of humans known as the Enclave. It seems this Enclave needed an army and they chose death claws because of their ferocity, physical prowess, and, well, you get the picture. Anyway, the only thing lacking in death claws was their intelligence. They needed to be smart enough to understand complex commands, but not so smart that they'd be a threat to those in charge. So, the Enclave started messing with a virus or some such thing and injected the Death Claws with it. This virus was known to mutate humans into some sort of super beings, so the Enclave wanted to see what it would do to Death Claws. Well, the result was a breed of Death Claws so smart that they could see they were being destined for slavery. So, they played dumb until they could gain their freedom. And here they are. 
Well, wait a minute. If that story is true, then the one that Gruthar told us was false. They didn't just arrive here to find the vault empty. The Enclave was here, and here the Enclave created these intelligent talking Deathclaw. That makes us wonder, what happened to the people before the Enclave arrived? And we can ask Goris this, do you know what happened to the people who used to live here in the vault? And Goris sighs. They were captured by the Enclave. Gruthar and the pack were forced to aid in their capture. They had no choice since they were slaves at the time. The fate of the humans has weighed heavily on Gruthar's mind. He's never really forgiven himself for his complicity in the affair. The humans were taken alive, but who knows what has happened to them since. Oh my god, the Enclave kidnapped the dwellers of Vault 13, and in a way, our own kin. Well, Goris, what can you tell me about Gruthar? Gruthar is not the monster that he appears to be. He genuinely cares about all of us here, and is doing everything he can to ensure our safety and survival. All of us trust him with our lives. I don't know what else I can say about him. You would have to get to know him and judge for yourself. Do you think the Death Claws are a threat to humans, we can ask? Well, the potential is there, especially when you take their new intelligence into account. However, I don't think that Gruthar and his pack pose a threat. They all seem to respect life and personal freedom above all else. Now, I don't expect you to take my word on this. I would ask you to judge for yourself. There are others who live here whom you can ask your questions. Do you have any information on this enclave you spoke of? No, only what I've told you. Wait, there is one other thing. The enclave showed an interest in some ruins to the west of here. Why, I don't know. That's about it. And with that, Goris marks the location of the military base on our map. What do you know about this virus, we can ask? I think it's called the FEV virus. The Enclave is, or was, doing extensive research on it. I'm sorry, but I don't know anything more. And finally, the Chosen One can say, You mentioned you wanted to do some traveling. How about joining me? Goris hesitates, and we get the feeling we are being carefully scrutinized. I would be honored to join you. And with that, Goris joins our party. But he's just a robed scholar. Not exactly sure how useful he'll be. Well, maybe he could drum up a potion for us or something. We can't access the terminals in this library, but here we do find a young woman and her small child. Talking with the child. Meow, meow. I am a cat, and I have special powers that only cats have. What are you? Oh, I'm just a normal person who's quite impressed with your special nature. Can you tell me your name? I'm Sandy. I'm not really a cat. I just like to play. Are you forced to stay here, we can ask? Yeah, my mom always tells me where I can and can't go. She tells me where I can play and where I can eat and when to go to bed and when to go potty and when to go to school and everything. I don't think it's fair that she can do everything she wants, but I've got to do what she says all the time. <laughs> okay, well, do you like it here, we can ask? I guess. I miss not having other kids to play with, but Mom says that'll change someday. She thinks other kids will come to live here. Until they do, I like to play with Valdis. He's funny, and he gives me piggyback rides. Mom says I should leave Valdis alone. He's busy and doesn't have time to play, but he always plays with me when I ask him. I just don't tell Mom about it anymore. Are you safe here, we can ask? Yeah. Mommy takes care of me, and Valdis wouldn't let anyone hurt me. I'm safe here. Talking with the child's mother. Hello, she says. I'm Ariel. I don't think I've seen you here before. Who are you? Hello, Ariel. My name is Oxhorn. Yes, I'm new here. And she says, it's a pleasure to meet you. What can I help you with? Are you a prisoner here, we can ask? And she says, no, I can leave any time I want. The Death Claws have made that very clear to me. They don't hold anyone here against their will, as far as I know. Are you treated all right by the Death Claws, we can ask? And she says, yes. They provide me with food, water, shelter, and protection. I feel very safe here, and that's more than I could ask for. 
Would you like to leave the vault, we can ask? I've considered it, she says, but I would have to say no. I feel safer here than anywhere else I've ever lived. I do get lonely for the company of other people like myself, but hopefully others will come to live here in the future and satisfy that need. So tell me, Ariel, why are you so sad? And she says, my husband recently died. I miss him, and I'm having problems adjusting. That's all. I'm sorry to hear that, we can say. How did it happen? And she says, My husband and I were traveling with a caravan on its way to the New California Republic. We wanted to start a new life for ourselves and our daughter, Sandy. Unfortunately, the caravan was attacked by raiders one night. They were incredibly brutal. They killed everyone, men, women, and children. Rand, my husband, died trying to defend Sandy and me. We were to die next when a miracle occurred. I was holding Sandy behind me, trying to keep her from the monster who shot Rand. He stood next to my husband's body and laughed at me as he aimed his gun at my head. Suddenly, this huge claw came out of the darkness, grabbed him from behind, and... Well, thank goodness that Sandy didn't see what happened next. Anyway, the raiders were being wiped out by this group of death claws. The one that saved Sandy and me stood near to us and talked to me. He kept reassuring me that I was safe and that he was sorry that he couldn't have gotten there sooner to help us. Afterwards, the Death Claws brought us here. And the Chosen One can say, Thank goodness that you and your daughter are safe. Moving out from the library, we find a sealed off locker room. Each of these foot lockers and lockers is locked, so we do have to pick them. But since the Death Claws don't have hands, they probably don't even know what's inside these lockers. These were likely left here by the people of Vault 13 when they were kidnapped. In the first Foot Locker, we find a bunch of explosives, plastic explosive, pulse grenades, and plasma grenades. In the next one, we find shotgun shells, a water chip, ah ha ha, okay. Guess the Vault Dweller must have brought back an extra. Some flamer fuel and another suit of combat armor. Man, I really need to go get those dermal implants. In the next locker, we find, what? It's a Gek! We found it! The Gek! The Garden of Eden Creation Kit! This unit is standard equipment for all vault -Tec vaults. A Gek is the resource for rebuilding civilization after the bomb. Just add water and stir. It weighs 10 pounds. At last! Stanislaus Braun's masterpiece! The Gek! We can finally head back to Arroyo and save our tribe! But... I'm sure there's still some time left. Let's finish exploring Vault 13 first. The next locker is empty. The next one has a super stim pack, a doctor's bag, four stim packs, and a first aid kit. The next one is empty. And the final one has some Navcom parts. This is another instance where we don't quite know what to do with this yet. But it looks important, so we'll save it for later. Moving west, we find a death claw guarding the next room. Greetings, human. Hello, we can say. Who are you? I am called Valdis, and you are? Oh, so this is the death claw that gives Sandy piggyback rides. Glad to meet you, we can say. I'm Oxhorn. How may I serve you? What's your job, we can ask. I am currently guarding this area of the vault against any unauthorized personnel. No offense to your fellow death claws, we can say, but you sound more educated, shall we say? Yes, we are quite diverse in our levels of education. I am doing my best to continue mine in my spare time. Well, that's an excellent goal, we can say. Keep it up. Moving beyond Valdis, we find another death claw guarding the room to the north. Stop. You not go here. This place off limits. What is this place, we can ask? This hatchery. Pack mother inside. Eggs inside. I guard. All of pack guard. Oh, well, who are you? I jewel. Pack warrior. I guard hatchery. I guard mother. Guarding mother is a position of great responsibility. You must be an important pack member. You think so? I not look at it that way. That make me feel good. I like. Thank you. May I talk to Mother, we can ask? You wait. I ask Mother. Jewel heads off, and in a moment he returns. Mother says she talk to you. You go in, but you go alone. Friends stay here. You not cause trouble. 
I not want hurt you, but I hurt you bad if you cause trouble. And with that, the chosen one, but not his companions, appears on the other side of Jewel. Moving forward, we can pass through a break in the wall to find a Deathclaw hatchery. We see a couple of baby Deathclaws walking around. Mama, squee, er, they say. And we can talk to the mother. A human visitor is an unexpected but not unwelcome event. I am Kareth. So you're the Deathclaw mother? Yes, I am the current pack mother. After my eggs hatch, the other mothers will have their turn. There are other mothers, we can say? Yes, there are more mothers. Should anything happen to me, one will be chosen to take my place. The pack must survive. Who is the Deathclaw father, we can ask? These eggs were sired by Gruthar, the pack leader. It is Gruthar who decides who will mate and who will not. The pack will be made strong by Gruthar. Oh, I see. Gruthar makes the decision, and he's the one who sired these eggs, oh Gruthar. Good gig he's got here. Well, what happened to the door, we can ask? It looks like it's seen better days. That is a painful memory. A treacherous human sneaked in here and planted a bomb among the eggs while I was asleep. Fortunately, he was not as stealthy leaving, and I awoke to find the bomb. And there was not enough time to deal with the device properly, so I threw it at the door and placed myself between it and the eggs. The eggs and I survived. The door did not. What happened to the person who did this, we can ask? His name is Matt, and he is a prisoner here. Personally, I wanted him dead, but Gruthar would not allow it. I do not see the wisdom in this, but Gruthar's word is law, and he will be obeyed. Should you talk to this human, take care. He cannot be trusted. Oh, it was mad, eh? Well, we've met him. How did this person get by the guard outside? The guard was added after this incident occurred. We were more trusting back then. Now... We are more careful. I see, we can say. Well, who built this hatchery? We built the cave portion, and a human friend installed the door. He got the parts from a settlement northeast of here. Ha, huh. northeast. Vault 8, perhaps? We can inspect the eggs, but we can't pick up any. Though if we could, we'd probably get in a lot of trouble. And when we're done, we can talk to Jewel to appear back on the other side of him. We arrive in the final portion of Vault 13. There are a number of terminals here. They're flickering, but we can't interact with any of them. And opening the final door to the west, we arrive in the Vault Overseer's office, though it no longer looks like an Overseer office. Here we find a man. Oh, hello there. I'm Jim, or Jimmy. What you up to, he says. Hi, Jim, we can say. I'm Oxhorn. What do you do here, we can ask. Well, he says, we're having some computer problems, and I'm looking into it. Unfortunately, my forte is software, not hardware. What's the problem, we can ask? And he says, the voice interface to the mainframe has failed, so Gruthar can't give the system instructions for running the vault. The food and water processors have already shut down. The power systems could very well be next. Well, why not just give it keyboard input, asks the chosen one. Well, you see, that's the weird part, he says. The system refuses to accept keyboard input. I'm at a loss as to what to do at this point. Yes, we can say Gruthar mentioned this to me and asked me to take a look. Do you mind? And he says, you can't make matters any worse than they already are. Now go right ahead. All right, we can say, but I'd like to ask you a few other questions first. Like, what's all this machinery for? And he says, this is a mainframe computer system and related support devices. From here, all functions of the vault are remotely controlled. Isn't this supposed to be the vault overseer room, we can ask? Normally, the vault overseer would be stationed here, he says, but Vault 13 has been fully automated. Why, we can ask? I mean, isn't that unusual? And he says, I don't know the full story, but at one point in the vault's history, there was a rebellion. The overseer was either killed or overthrown. I'm not sure which. Anyway, the leaders of the revolution didn't want to entrust the fate of the people to another overseer, so they installed this mainframe. The records say it was purchased from... Oh, what was the name? Ah, I remember. The Brotherhood of Steel. What? The Brotherhood sold their technology to vault dwellers? Okay. 
Can you tell me anything about this brotherhood we can ask? And he says, no, I'm sorry, but I have no information on them. This all happened ages ago, and I've never found any references to them other than this one. However, it's my understanding that the Brotherhood was a military outfit, and there are some ruins of what appears to be a military base west of here. That may be what's left of them. Huh, another reference to this military base. Well, are you here in the vault because you want to be, we can ask? Oh yeah, he says, I've liked it here ever since I stumbled upon the place, and I don't really want to leave. I've always been a loner and don't much care for people, no offense intended. None taken, we can say. Well, what do you think about the Death Claws? Well, he says, in some ways I admire them for what they are and what they're trying to become. In other ways, they scare the hell out of me. I don't think I'll ever get used to the fact that they are just as smart as I am. Well, some of them are that smart. Do you think they are a threat to human society, we can ask? Oh, absolutely, he says. They are far superior to us physically, and they are our equals mentally. That makes them a pretty big threat. However, it all comes down to morals and ethics in the end. Fortunately, they seem to be ethical and morally well-developed. Yeah, I see what you mean. Well, I'll be going now, we can say. Activating the nearby computer, we examine the computer terminal, but we cannot find anything obviously wrong with it. What do we want to do? We can hit it in that special way. We gaze at the console for a while and decide upon the best spot to place a punch. After giving it our best this'll fix it hit, the monitor flashes a couple of times and then stabilizes. There is no other effect. Now what do we want to do? We can kick it in that special spot. This well-known repair method produces two results. First, the monitor seems to go haywire for several seconds and then stabilizes. Second, we hear a breaking metal type of sound and the panel we kicked falls to the floor. What do we want to do? Next, we can try to run the diagnostic program. We are certain that the system should have a set of diagnostic routines available. However, the keyboard input seems to have been disabled. The unit accepts voice commands only. What do we want to do? The only thing left is to look inside. And peering into the mass of cables and circuit boards, we find that the system has been deliberately sabotaged. One of the circuit boards, the voice recognition module, is beyond repair and must be replaced. Now all we need to do is find a replacement module. Ah, it must have been Matt. Well, thankfully, we have a replacement vault Tech computer voice control module in our bag. We can use the device on the terminal and then access it. We install the module in the terminal. The system is repaired. All right, looks like we're done. Talking to Jimmy, he says, you should let Gruthar know that you fixed the computer. Okay, think I will. When we're all done, we can head back to the elevator and take it to floor number one. Talking with Gruthar. You have restored my faith in humans. I thank you for all that you have done for the pack. Is there something that I can do for you in return? Yes, we can say. I'm looking for a Gek. I've been told that I could find it here. Do you know where it is? But if we found the Gek on our own and took it from the locker, Gruthar says, Yes, there was a Gek in the vault storage room. However, it is missing. I am sorry that I cannot give it to you as a reward for all your generous help. And we can say, uh, that's okay. I'll try to locate one elsewhere. Well, we don't have to worry about this anymore. We've explored Vault 13, we solved all their problems, we've got a brand new companion, and we've got a Gek. We can race out of this cave, head to our highwayman, and book it to Arroyo. Chosen. 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 Do you hear me? Hear me? The village dies. Die. All of our futures die, too. We have little left in both time and essence. Hurry. 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 Oh no, Hakunin! What did he mean that the village dies? What did he mean that there was little time left? We can try to race there as fast as we can, but on our way, we stumble upon a pack of Deathclaw. Taking a break to fight our way through, it's then we realize... 
Wow, Goris is a Deathclaw. I guess we probably should have known that, since we found him in a vault filled with intelligent Deathclaws. It was that robe, you know, despite his size and his hunched appearance. Man, that robe sure was a good costume. And he looks unlike all other Deathclaws. He appears to be an albino Deathclaw and slightly smaller than a normal Deathclaw, about halfway between a baby Deathclaw and an adult Deathclaw. Incidentally, it was on this trip back to Arroyo that I bumped into the second of the Morton brothers. Remember we killed Frog Morton while exploring Redding? We've already been assaulted by one of his brothers who's been hunting us for revenge. This is his second brother. Goris is a pretty decent companion, though there are some drawbacks to using him. Mainly, he can't wear armor and he can't use weapons. He is strictly melee only. When fully leveled up, he has an armor class of 35. This is better than Skynet, who, when fully leveled, has an armor class of 27. But it's still not as good as putting a companion in power armor. But when fully leveled up, Goris has 10 strength and 10 endurance, and deals 45 melee damage. But when we get him, he's only level 1, and can only deal 28 melee damage. So we really gotta put our time into Goris to level him up so that he becomes a really useful companion. This was Newt Morton. And aside from a light support weapon, these guys aren't carrying anything interesting. And believe it or not, it was immediately after this that we were attacked by the final Morton brother, Snake Morton, the toughest Morton brother. He wears combat armor and wields an HK G11E. I seem to get really unlucky with random encounters during this trip. Along the way, I bumped into yet another pack of Deathclaws before finally arriving at Arroyo. Chosen, the Shadow of Darkness arrived before you. It's a Kunin! He's dying! What happened? Dark souls came. They took everyone. Dark souls? What do you mean? A rush of wind came. On it were great dragonflies that spat flame. Evil men crawled from the beasts' bellies and brought death to our warriors. Our warriors couldn't stop them? The spirit was willing, but the spearheads were weak. The evil ones burned our warriors with the lights of hell. They killed everyone? All were dead or taken. My spirit returned to flesh only to reveal the truth to the Chosen. What happened to the ones taken? A strange mist stole their minds and sent them to the land of sleep. The evil ones walked among the dreamers, yet did not dream. And then? The beasts swallowed all, then took to the winds. Uh, which way were the winds that they followed going? Did you never listen when I taught you the yearly dance of the wind spirits? South, of course. Your descriptions were so vivid and powerful, Great Hakunin, that I was often stricken senseless for the duration of your lessons. Yes, they traveled the wind south. I overheard the Dark Soul speaking. They planned to rest their beasts at a place named Navarro before crossing the great basin of our Earth Mother's tears. Basin of tears? An ocean of tears cried by a mother for her children. Oh, oh, the ocean. But what shall I do? For me, nothing. Chosen, you must seek the fold of the Dark Ones and rescue our people. I will try. You are the Chosen. You must do. Hakunin? But with that, he dies. There is nothing on his inventory. And the rope bridge leading back to Roroyo is gone. It must have been the Enclave. They came here in their vertebrates, just like the vertebrates we saw in the arms exchange at New Reno. They killed and kidnapped my tribe, just like they kidnapped the residents of Vault 13. But why? Why are they kidnapping people? Now Hakunin told us that he overheard the Enclave mention the name Navarro. 
and we discover a new location marked on our map. It's on the coast. Now, before heading to Navarro, since it looks like we're going to fight the Enclave, I wanted to beef up my character a little bit. Grabbing some of those suits of combat armor that we found in the Sierra Army Depot and in these vaults, we can head to Redding. Here we find a kid running around. Hello, he says. I'm Melchior Jr. My dad's a miner. His name is Melchior, just like me. My dad's a good miner, but he wants to be a magician. Daddy's stage name is Melchior the Magnificent. His best trick was pulling a rat out of a hat. He went away with some men dressed in metal clothes. I hope Dad comes back soon. I miss his magic tricks. I'm going to be a great magician like my dad. Wait, his dad was taken by men in metal clothes? It's only now, after everything that's happened recently, that we begin to understand. The Enclave came here to Redding, too, and kidnapped some miners, including Melchior's dad. Heading to Duck Johnson, we can purchase some of his dermal implants. I chose the dermal and phoenix armor implants and decided not to get the assault enhancement for either of them, since those two assault enhancements each remove one charisma. So that's a negative two charisma if we go that way. And since that affects my party limit, I figured I'd just stick with the regular dermal and phoenix. But it was just then, after getting both implants, that Goris takes us aside. I suddenly sense that my pack is in trouble. I am sorry to leave you, but I must check on my brothers. Okay, we can say. And with that, Goris races towards Vault 13. Oh no, Goris, we can follow him there. Hopping into the highway, man, we can hightail it to Vault 13. Opening the door and heading in. Oh no, there's a puddle of blood where Theron once stood. And the same is true for Joseph the Herbalist. But there's no puddle of blood where Gruthar once stood. Heading to the elevator, we can go to floor two. Dar is gone, and nothing left but a puddle of blood. Heading up to the rooms. Oh, they killed Matt. Why'd they kill Matt? And Dave, the unluckiest man in the world, is gone. Though, now that he's dead, I'm sure he's in a better place. Heading to the elevator, we can go to floor three. And racing down the hallway. Oh no, Dahlia. But if Dahlia's dead, Sandy, racing into the library. Oh, Sandy and Ariel are gone. But there's Goris. Maybe he knows what happened. Talking with him, he refuses to face us. The security cameras recorded what happened. You should go check it. Heading that way, we see that Valdis is just a puddle of blood. Jewel lies here dead, and moving to the hatchery, our worst fears are confirmed. All the eggs are broken. Kirth and her babies are dead. Moving towards the mainframe, we see that they didn't even spare Jimmy. Interacting with the computer, accessing security footage, loading holographic playback. You are the last, Gruthar. The stain of your kind will soon be wiped clean. You tell your so-called president that he will burn for this. Whatever. You were never anything more than a talking animal. That may be. But we were created through your experimentation. You gave us life. And now I give you death. <laughs> Take his body. The doctor wanted a specimen. It was the Enclave. They came here to wipe out the talking death claws. And that's why we don't find many bodies. They took all of the bodies back as specimens. But one of the soldiers was much larger than all of the others. He must have been their leader. Who exactly was he? Heading back to Goris. I wish to avenge my brethren. All right, we can say. Let's do this. And again, Goris joins our party. All signs point to this Navarro, which we now know is right on the coast to the west. But heading that way, we stumble upon the ruins of this military base we keep hearing about. 
both Goris and Jimmy told us that the Enclave had been interested in the ruins of this military base. Maybe they came from here, or maybe they returned to here. In our next episode, we'll explore this military base to see if we can pick up their trail. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. I've been to Project Purity. Confound your friends and family who recognize the Jefferson Memorial, but have no idea what Project Purity is. This design comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other products as well, like smartphone cases, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos. And he says, nope, when I turned 22, this strange fungus... <laughs>